For someone who leads, the people are what they miss most. But once they leave, they also get the privilege of meeting new people. I've been waiting with angst for this Cuban trip, for it's not easy to reach. Cuba and its people are as passionate yet simple as the blazing sun of the Caribbean Sea. From the easternmost city of Baracoa, my journey continues to Havana, the heart of Cuba. I'm there to find the smiles on the faces of content dreamers. I follow the eastern sunlight to the American continent on the other side of the world. After transferring in Toronto, I reach the Central American island nation of Cuba. Finally, after a long circuitous route, I have arrived in Havana. Havana is the largest port city in the American West Indies and touches the Gulf of Mexico. It is an old city named after a Taino Native American chief, Habaguenex. A city where past and present coexist. Simply walking the streets makes me feel like I am time traveling. Since explorers set foot here 520 years ago, like many American countries, Cuba has also become a melting pot of mixed ethnicities. Nothing can compare to riding a horse-drawn carriage when going back in time. Revolution Museum. Before President Para de Batista. Now, Revolution Museum. El Capitol Leo, which was home of the National Assembly, was designed after the United States Capitol building. Havana is a mix of old world architecture, from colonial days as well as those from the early 20th century, which are reminiscent of the US. It feels like I'm walking through the pages of a history book. Four children, four children. Yeah. Uh, champion and children, no champion and money. <laughs> no money. I make a visit to Moro Castle, an old fortress that overlooks the old city. This fortress continues for 14 kilometers from the edge of Havana Bay to the south of Santiago. Havana has been a crosslink between the two Americas and Europe for the past 500 years. This means the city has also known its ups and downs. Built as a means of blocking enemy invasion, construction began in 1589 and was completed 41 years later. This grand fortress overlooking Havana has not deteriorated despite years of sea and wind exposure. 18th century, 1762, Havana was taken by the English and it was a turning point in Cuban history. Why? Because for the first time a foreign power came to Havana apart from Spain. So they came here in 1762 and they covered that hill that was totally unprotected for that time and they surrounded the Morro Castle during three weeks. So after that they were able to took the Morro Castle and the Spanish withdrew. So they stayed in Havana in the whole country in the whole island of Cuba for 11 months. So for that reason Havana was declared in 1982 a World Heritage Site because it's very important not only for Cuba but for the rest of the region. Castillo del Moro 
is a historical site which transferred from Spanish to English hands. This impregnable fortress, into which no Spanish vessel could penetrate, was also a strategic point for the Cuban Revolution. As if to speak out for the weight of history that Cuba must overcome, Moro Castle stands silently against that weight. In Havana's alleys, even the peeling paint is picturesque. Kodai is working on a Russian jeep from 1957 that looks like it belongs in a museum. But this is all in a day's work for the average Cuban. It's said that your business will fail if you open an auto repair shop in Cuba. That's how common it is for Cubans to fix their own cars. Since the 1959 revolution, individual ownership of cars was banned. So they had to wipe and dust and maintain their old cars, changing the parts when necessary. Kodai graciously offers me a ride in his prized car. Wow, a 1957 Russian Jeep. The engine still purrs. What an honor just to get a ride. This old Cuban with his old car reminds me that old things are not what should be thrown out, but preserved and looked after. In the narrow back alleys of Havana's old section is where you can discover the poor but vivacious lives of Cubans. These people have wordlessly endured the tough times that have faded into history. Old things that have been carpeted over with time acquire strength. This is why their lives, so different from our own, are so beautiful. You can encounter yet a different aspect of Havana in the evening. To Cubans, music is a part of life as well as energy source. Before long, the streets of Havana are intoxicated with the music that exudes from the clubs. The city has maintained its appearance from 100 years ago, even through war and revolution. What adds charm to the old city with its peeling paint and plaster are the big old cars that were popular in the 50s and 60s. It's a true vintage car paradise. As if from a scene in a movie, it makes me picture what Havana must have looked like in its heyday. Although new cars are being imported due to the open policy today, these charming antique cars are still what define the face of Cuba. The highlight to a Cuban trip would be to ride in a vintage car. My dream is finally about to come true.
6 cilindros. De engine 6 cilindros original. Chevrolet. Las piezas de repuesto las detrás de Estados Unidos. Y aquí los cubanos hemos aprendido a fabricarla también. The 1950s classic car, which seems it should belong in the Hall of Fame of an automobile museum, still runs well after more than half a century on the road. We pull up on a secluded road. I learned some simple operating techniques before I get behind the wheel. One hundred. One hundred. One hundred eighteen kilometers. Five hundred. Uh, I want to have a good day. But this car is old. It's not new. It's all made in the same way. But when I was young, I was driving it. It's not new. I want to have a good day. The engine on this well-maintained car makes a pleasant sound. I am used to changing gears now. In a world where speed is everything, I realize the value of slowing down and stopping as I enjoy the view while I drive. It's <laughs> 아무래도 수동이다 보니까 졸릴 어? 위험은 없겠네. 아, 전, 전혀 없죠. 그리고 경치가 좋으니까 어, 이거 보느라고 뭐 졸고 그럴 걱정은 없을 것 같아요. 다팡 튀었으니까요. 그리고 당당당당 엔진 소리가 진짜 진짜 자동차의 본연의 모습 같아요. When we want to love, we love. I decide to go a bit farther while I have this classic car. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the best. It is about two hours west of Havana. I decide to drive to the Vinales Valley, which is famous for its cigars. I am on my way to Pinar del Rio, 150 kilometers west of Havana. Natural time prevails here. The limestone mount, called Mogote, is an amazing sight that can't be found anywhere else. A large chunk of limestone, which was underwater approximately 100 million years ago, rose and was eroded by wind and water over a long time to form the Vanales Valley. During that process, rainwater seeped in between the cracks of the earth and dissolved rock which created a huge underground cave. This dark, narrow cave continues for over 300 meters. You can ride a boat on the San Vincent River, which flows through the cave. Runaway slaves hid in this dark, damp cave during the Spanish colonial era, which is why it is called Indio Cave. It was also a hideout for guerrilla troops during the revolution.
the rocks show traces of the thousands of years of their growth. Spellbound by their strange shapes, my trip into the past has come to an end before I know it. Vanellis Valley is a gift from nature. Leaving the oddly shaped Mogote behind, I take off to the tobacco fields where Cuba's specialty is produced. At a wide green field, how long it has been since I have seen a farmer using an ox led plow. All heartwarming memories can be rediscovered in Cuba. Hola. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm wondering if I can try this one si. here. Cultivando. Oh, si. Hey. Oh, si. Gracias. Mm. Oh, oh. With the spirit of an explorer who does not fear new experience, I try plowing for the first time in my life. I had underestimated it. Plowing is no simple task. I have to dodge the planted corn and plow beside them. But my body does not obey my brain. The farmer calls out to the oxen as if soothingly calling his children and skillfully plows his field. He shows me that this is how a Cuban farmer does it. Yeah, yeah. Another gift provided by the Vanellis climate and fertile soil are tobacco leaves used to make cigars. I make my way to a tobacco drying room. The scent of dried leaves fill the moisture in the shed. Everything requires waiting in order to reach completion. The drawing and fermenting process required to make the best cigars is a necessary wait. Oh, <laughs> Oh, 
이제 담배 냄새, 씨가 냄새가 조금씩 나기 시작하네요. 아, 이렇게 숙성 돼서 이렇게 부들부들 어, 해줬구나. Para confeccionar un tabaco se hacen tres partes diferentes. Se dice capote, que es una hoja, una hoja del first, centro grueso, capote, que tiene más de 25 centímetros de vista de, de, de tamaño. Se utiliza la tripa mezclando hojas de la libre pie, centro fino y corona para una buena combustión del puro y en nuestro cigar. caso la capa del and centro, this is the last and finest centro grueso, la hoja all. más fina, más flexible. Now it's time to take the leaves and roll the cigar. Sugar, coffee, and the third greatest export of Cuba is cigars. As I walk down the street, seems everyone I meet. Cuban cigars boast the best quality in the world and undergo a manufacturing process, which is still veiled in secrecy to this day. Most of the process is carefully administered by the government and is not made public. Cuban cigars have been loved by Europeans since it was first introduced through Spain in the 16th century. Writer Mark Twain said, If I cannot smoke in heaven, then I shall not go. Like a magnet to a traveler's feet, I gravitate toward a rural town street music. Cuba, the land of the salsa and mambo. Cubans dance freely to the music that has helped comfort the weight of their weary lives. Music persists anywhere you go, and street shows are everywhere. I just happened to encounter a Cuban traditional changui band. This is the leader named Wanchin. It is said that Cubans will bang on anything that they can drum, which testifies to their innate sense of rhythm. Although the music was passed on by African slaves with their characteristic humor and optimism, Cuban music is merrier and more exciting than any other type of music. Before I know it, I sing along to the simple repeated chorus. Cuban music is special because everyone can enjoy it together. The Chungwi band finishes playing. It turns out they're one big family. 
Amigo, Familia, Family. Ay. Yo como 19 años. Al lugar, muy orgulloso y sabroso. Proud of my family. Este ritmo autóctono es nuestra región. Me gusta el baile. I like dancing. I like changui. I like changui. The sun. Bolero. Bolero. Lo que toque. Lo que toque. Lo que toque. Whatever they play. Whatever they play. They're constantly singing that lyric, Zizi Rikim. What's the meaning of the Jijiriku? It's like a dance. I'm sure that worn out bus has been fixed and fixed again over the decades. The Changui band rides this bus and travels all over Cuba to perform. I decide to tag along. Soon their Zizi Rikum song rings through the bus. Songs of their life and spirit. It is a haven that lets them rest at the end of a long day. I meet up with the Changwi band again the next day. Today they will be playing in this town's festival. Raymond holds his wife in his arms and dances with her as always. Every day is a celebration for this couple. The secret to their health and marital happiness seems to lie in their dancing. They are as good as professionals, but it turns out that they're all farmers. I understand. You're, you're a farmer. Ah, sí, sí, farmer. Ah, bueno, yo trabajo en una casa de cultura. Yo soy programador de actividad. Yo soy director de un museo. Él es el trabajador de de una CCS, o sea, de pueblo campesino. También campesino. The farmers have put down their plows for a bit to come here. You can't leave out the food stalls when talking about festivals. <laughs> because it is a farmer's festival, corn, coffee, tropical fruits, and other produce, which they grew themselves, add to the excitement. Cubans love meat. Roasted pork is an essential menu during fiestas. Oh, 
이분이 직접 재배하신 거를 어, 빠신대요. 빠셔갖고 저한테 한잔 주다가 하고. The nuttiness of freshly roasted coffee spreads with a rich scent from the mortar. You realize the value of things only when it is yearned for and lacking rather than when it is a plenty. I have the chance to drink a priceless cup of coffee at such a simple country festival. Cuban farmers are called guajiros, which bears the meaning country bumpkin. But they don't seem to take heed. They acknowledge their lives and live on as true guajiros. The Cuban farmers' Guajiro festival gets more heated with song and dance. This is the moment when the universal language of music unites us all. Give me a kiss to build a dream on in my mind. Back in Havana, dusk already settles over the city. At the Malecon, the long esplanade along the coast, Cubans have gathered in search of romance. Music is the life of Cubans. It is a gift given to dreamers. Famous jazz guitarist, Roy Cooter said, in Cuba, the music flows like a river. <laughs>